Hi, this is the microscope required practical. Okay, it's the first one of the biology ones. Uh, and the whole point in this is to learn how to use a microscope and how to prepare a slide containing cells, usually onions. Right, firstly, just starting off with the microscope, right? Now, obviously, in this top right-hand corner, right, that's what a typical class microscope looks like. Now, there's then a few num sort of labels that then we sort of need to know about. Firstly, you've got your eyepiece, right? That's obviously where you put your eye, right? And it could be times 10 magnification, something like that. So the actual lens itself where you put your eye has. Now, the structure of these things changes quite a lot, right? But this tube here, right, is the body tube, right, which is where you, you kind of land looking through. The bit that spins around, this bit here, is called the nose piece. And then you've got the objective lenses, right? There's usually three of them, right? You've got a high power one, which is then the longest one. And you've got the low power one, which is the shortest one. Uh, and often, again, what they might be is they might vary from times four, right? Times 10, times 40, may well be things like that. Then what we've got is where you actually put the microscope slide itself. Here is the stage, right? A bit like in a theatre, right? It's usually the black thing, right? So it's this sort of black area here. On there, you've got a couple of clips, right? They're often too loose to actually hold the actual slide in place, but the principle is they hold the slide. Underneath, you've then got a condenser and an iris diaphragm. Right, now what they do is there's kind of like you can twist it around, right, and what it'll do, it'll make the hole bigger and smaller to allow different amounts of light through. Then this is kind of like an oldish microscope, and what it's got, it's got a mirror at the bottom here. And what they used to have is they used to have, well, that's supposed to be a bulb, right? Is a bulb, that's obviously a bulb, right? What it used to do is used to shine light from a bulb, right, hits the mirror. I'll do it in red this, right, hits the mirror and then goes up into the microscope, okay? Or what you used to have to do is maybe even have it right next to a window, right? So then light from the window comes in, hits the mirror and goes up. But these days, what you tend to have is you tend to have, showing on the proper one, is like an inbuilt light, right, which is a lot easier to use. Then the last little bits on this left-hand side here, you've got the arm, Right, which is then used for carrying the actual microscope around. And you've got the coarse adjustment and the fine adjustment. Those two are then for focusing. Right? And what you do is you start with the coarse adjustment, just to get it approximately into focus. Then you go to the fine adjustment, and what you then do is then that sort of allows you to get it absolutely focused to your own eyesight. Now, uh, there's two methods to this. Now, the first method, right, okay, I'll just put number one next to it, is how to use the microscope itself. I've just then gone through the structure, right, of the microscope. You're not really ever going to get asked about any of the naming of the parts of the microscope, but it's just useful to kind of know. The only bits that you might need to know about is the eyepiece, which is at the top there. Oops, need to put a C in it. And the objective lenses. Okay, that goes off the side there. All right. So the method itself, right? And if they ask you in an exam, how do you use a microscope? This is basically the method that you'll use. Number one, turn the nose piece to select the lowest objective lens. Right. So when you're doing this, right, what you've got to do is you've got to look for. You see that one there? That's the shortest one. Right. What you do is you have that one pointing down. Right. Because it's easier to actually use the shortest lens. Right, to actually get it into focus in the first place. And what you do is you lower it as far as you can possibly do, right? So then the only time then you're actually focusing is you move away from the microscope slide. That's to prevent in the future, um, when you're using the longer lenses, if you go down onto the microscope slide, you could damage the microscope or you could damage the slide. Once it's on the lowest one, right, turn the adjustment knob, right, or dial, right, which is this one, Right, until it becomes into focus. Then it, this microscope hasn't actually got a fine one. So what it might do, it might have a little fine dial on there as well. And then you use the fine one to then get it absolutely into focus. Number three, make a clear label drawing of some of the cells. Okay, so number three. Now obviously this at the bottom here, right, is a very detailed drawing of it. 
right? But it kind of gives you a bit of an idea about what it might look like. And the chances are, what you'll do is you draw a circle, and then you'll probably just draw, it looks more like bricks going across. Okay, but you've then got to try and draw it as accurately as you possibly can, what you can see. Then, number four is write the magnification underneath your drawing. Now, to do that, what you do is you look at the magnification for the eyepiece. So let's say that's times 10. Then you look at your objective lens, and let's say that is times four. And to actually work out the magnification, right, what you do is you do 10 times four equals 40. Right? And what you'll do then is you'll write that down underneath your diagram. So here I would then write down magnification is times 40. If the eyepiece was still 10, right, and the objective lens I was using was times 10, then what I would do to work out the total magnification, I would do 10 times 10, which is obviously 100. <clears throat> right. Then... What you've done then is you've then worked out exactly how to use the microscope. Then you need to prepare a slide, right, just using kind of like a standard method that I'm going to run through now. Usually it is using onions. Now, the reason why you use onions is because it's relatively easy to get a very thin kind of piece of onion. And what you do is you get a one cell thick piece of onion. And to do that, you kind of grab the onion right this is then supposed to be looking at grabbing an onion and you kind of get one little chunk of it and you kind of rub your nail or rub tweezers over the top or the bottom and what you'll do is you'll see a really really kind of little thin piece that kind of starts to peel off it looks almost like a thin piece of skin you put that then on the microscope slide right so there's your microscope slide okay and what you do is you put your very very thin piece of onion on the microscope slide You've got to make sure it's not folded over, because if it's folded over, the picture won't be particularly very good. All right? And then you put it straight back into the middle. Then, now I should have usually brown for this, is you add a tiny little bit of iodine. Right? So what you do is you add onto the microscope, onto the piece of onion, a little bit of iodine. Now, the iodine is a stain. Right? So you also need to be a little bit careful about getting it on the desk or getting it on your clothes because it will stain your fingers, it will stain the desk and it will definitely stain any white shirts that you're wearing. Then what you do is, I'll do this in green, you get a little piece of glass called a cover slip. That cover slip goes over the top and what you've got to do, you've got to very, very gently and often the best way of doing it is kind of rest it at one point and then kind of lower it down. Then press very gently on it to get rid of any air bubbles. Because if you've got air bubbles underneath it, it just kind of, when you're looking through the microscope, you kind of see these circular discs that look really cool, right? But they are just air bubbles and you don't really want to be looking at them. But obviously you don't press too hard, right? Because if you press too hard, then you could break the cover slip. Uh, once you've pressed very gently and got rid of the air bubbles, get a piece of paper towel. All right, so if I draw my cover slip over the top there now, because you pressed it, some of the iodine then comes out. So you get a piece of paper towel and soak up any excess iodine that has then come out around the outside. Now, it's quite a good idea, even though it tends not to happen, is just to leave it for a little bit, because the longer the iodine's on, the longer the stain takes place, right? And then what it'll do, it'll then uh, allow you to see all the different structures in there or certain structures in there better. This diagram at the top here, right, is one that uh, it'd be very unlikely that you're going to be able to see it through a light microscope. But what it does is it shows the structure of the cells. And inside it, I mean, you can see it on some really good microscopes. You can see like the nucleus, cell wall, cell membrane and the vacuole. Now, uh, in addition to the actual questions of actually using the microscope, you might get asked to talk about the actual image, the um, image size and the magnification. And this is possibly one of the only times I'll ever use one of these triangles. All right. And it's called the AIM triangle. Right. AIM. Right. It's just a good way of remembering it. And I always remember it like that. So the A is your actual. I is your image size and M is your magnification.
all right so the way that the actual triangle itself works i would put my finger over one of them right but if i then let's say uh, i want to work out the magnification right you put your finger over the m and then it's image divided by actual okay which is this one here magnification equals image divided by actual <clears throat> now this is then an example of a question so what i'm just going to do is i'm just going to then run through it all right so a student drew an animal cell they observed under the microscope interesting right the diameter of the cell they drew was a hundred millimeters all right but the actual size of the cell was 0 0.01 millimeters how many times larger was the drawing than the actual cell so they're talking about how many times larger so they're after the magnification okay now um, what we then need to do is we need to then look at their aim equation so they're after the magnification so that is then image size because it's the i divided by the actual size so the image size is 100 millimeters the actual size is 0 0.01 millimeters divide them that then tells you the magnification is 10,000 times okay which is pretty powerful now with that question what you'll notice is that's in millimeters and that's in millimeters you'll be lucky if that's the case so at the top of the screen here then what I've done is I've got a conversion table what you need to do and it doesn't really matter which way around it is you need to get the units of both of the actual numbers the same whether it's doing it in micrometers millimeters I would always recommend kind of going for millimeters because it's kind of one that always sort of makes sense so if you're giving it as 10 micrometers what you've got to do is you've got to convert it into millimeters so you start with 10 micrometers there to convert it in the millimeters you use this diagram here and what you do is you divide by a thousand so 10 micrometers divided by a thousand will then give it into millimeters this diagram at the top here right the conversion diagram is one that you need to learn right you need to learn these here because you could have to convert between any of them unlikely it's going to be picometers but the others it may well be learn that order right and then just remember going from each one you're either timesing or dividing by a thousand each time okay so that's the end of then of the microscope required practical now it's un unlikely you'll get asked to how to actually use a microscope but you do need to know how you actually do it and be able to come up with a bit of a method right but when you've done it in class then what you can do is you can kind of picture in your head right and then what you can do is you can go through the different stages it's very likely right that you will ask how to actually set up a slide and just be aware that we done onion but they could choose anything right it doesn't matter what they could be but you follow exactly the same process so if it's a fly's wing or a piece of potato or a piece of carrot right it doesn't matter you just do exactly the same process that you did it is very likely you're going to get a calculation right and remember your calculation is going to be your aim equation right because your aim equation is the one that is everything to do with microscopes and always look to convert to get the units the same right and probably millimeters is the best one to convert everything into